Welcome to another Wednesday webinar from ESU8. My name is Katie Morrow. I'm the Instructional Technology Facilitator here at ESU8. It's January 2016, and for the next half hour, I hope to explore with you a little bit about augmented and, and virtual reality and making learning magically come alive. Hopefully we'll explore the potential and the possibilities of what augmented reality has to offer for education. So get ready, this should be fun. To start, you don't really need to look very far to see virtual reality and where some of this kind of comes from and how it's used in everyday life. Whether it be coloring pages that come to life with an app, or like the screenshot in the upper left hand corner shows, an app that shows you the stars and the constellations just in your living room. Or a 360 degree uh, virtual reality video showing flying in a, in a fighter jet um, where you turn the video to different sides of the screen and experience different parts of the video. Google Cardboard in the upper right is something that has become pretty popular as of late, and if you noticed over the holidays, Verizon was even offering free cardboard holders, uh, the Google Cardboard projector set that you could fold up and put your smartphone in and then download the free Google Cardboard apps or an app that uses the same technology. And then just like we used to watch in our old Viewmaster viewfinders, um, experience something um, in different directions and by tilting your head one way or another you actually interact with it. Now the Google Cardboard apps are mostly free from everything that I've seen. The cardboard is something that you actually purchase whether you do it online they range about ten dollars is kind of an average price sometimes you could get them cheaper um, and then like I said fold it up and you do have to use a smartphone. But these are just just a few of the experiences where the user no longer just passively sits and gets information, but rather you can see a common theme here. By doing something in a virtual reality or augmented reality environment, you control the action of what's happening. I watched a TED Talk recently by Chris Milk, and he was talking about the difference that he noticed with virtual reality videos compared to normal videos. Obviously, multimedia makes emotion come alive for the viewers. But when watching them in a virtual reality experience where you can change the point of view of the angle or the action or look to one side or the other and see what's happening over there, it actually added a whole other level of empathy for us as humans. So you may be thinking, well, this is just a gimmick or a fad. And it's fun, but what's the point? Well, think about it. If we can add more empathy, more understanding into our media and our multimedia experiences. Shouldn't that be something that we're doing in the classroom? I would say yes. When you ever get started with a new technology or new piece of software, I often think that sometimes it's just the vocabulary that trips us up more than anything. So some of the key words that you might hear during this webinar include an aura, which is what comes to life when you scan something and feel that augmented reality experience brought to life. Trigger is what triggers it to happen. So typically it's an image or uh, a logo that you scan in order to make that aura appear. An overlay is the media that whoever creates the augmented reality lays on top of the trigger image that will be brought to life and two free apps that we're going to address to create augmented reality include Erasma and Blipper. I'll cover both of those in this webinar. But first, let's experience augmented reality from some professional sites and apps that have already created it for us. So we can just experience it first and then we'll create it later. The first one is called Chromeville. I'll show you how this works, and you can definitely experience it for yourself if you visit their website, download their printables, and uh, bring, it, bring it to life with Chromeville. To experience augmented reality with the Chromeville app, first visit their website and print off their printables, color them, and then launch the Chromeville app on your iPad, play, in the classroom, let the logo load so that you can scan your entire page 
Hold real still. And then watch your plant come to life. You can interact with your plant with the buttons on the side and note that if you give it certain items like water, it will grow even more. But if you give it things it doesn't need like sandwiches, it won't impact the success of your plant. So learn through augmented reality with the free Chromeville app. Another choice is called Quiver. I'll let you see that one here. The Quiver app was originally known as Kolar Mix. It's a free app with paid content inside of it. But if you visit their website, you can easily see which printables are offered for free. Print those off, color them, and then launch the Quiver app to interact. Hit the butterfly to play. And then scan your image so that you get it completely in your frame. Hold it still so it can come to life. And it will actually take the weevil that I colored and hide it inside of the grain. It's your job to interact with it to find that weevil and tap on it to learn more about weevils. Let's see if I can do it. I see him there. You got it. I got him. Congratulations. And so you get the idea. Quiver also has additional printables. I enjoy this one which is a model of the earth, a map of the earth. Color it your colors and then spin the globe and interact with it on a variety of layers and levels. So not just with the colors you colored, but also the clouds, the atmosphere, the, the land, um, different kinds of layers that you can see on that spinnable three-dimensional earth. So Quiver is another great augmented reality to check out. Here's Elements 4D from Daiquiri, and I'll let this video explain this app to you. Elements 4D by Daiquiri is another augmented reality app that's free. This one is more geared towards older students. You still visit the website and print off the printables, but this time instead of coloring them, you fold them up, cut them out, fold them up, and glue them together into these three-dimensional cube shapes. On the side of each cube is printed an element from the periodic table, and you bring them to life with the free Elements 4D app. You scan the tops of the cubes, and it'll immediately tell you which element you have scanned, and show you what it looks like in real life, in nature. Um, you can see chlorine is a green gas, where tin, above it, is more of a metallic material. You can really make magic when you show how these chemical elements interact by pushing two cubes together. When we have two cubes touching each other, then we see that chlorine and sodium form sodium chloride, otherwise known as salt, and it totally changes the look and the chemical properties of that compound. So you can see the formula within the app, hear what it looks like, and you can try different combinations of those elements and really learn by experimentation. Next we have Google Translate, which isn't an augmented reality app, but it uses augmented reality within the app. It used to be called Word Lens, and I'll let you see what this, this looks like. Many people probably know about Google Translate's ability to translate typed text, but did you know it can use augmented reality to translate text on images as well? To do so, you need the free Google Translate app. Launch it. Choose your languages up top. Here I've chosen to, for it to detect Italian text and translate it to English. And then instead of speaking into the app or typing in text, use the camera button. Let it use your camera and then scan something that has that Italian text on it. You'll see it's not perfect, but it sure is fun. Here we have Delight's Square as the candies. 
head over here, we see that it can detect the natural from all natural, and down in the bottom left-hand corner, it's trying to translate that text as well. So another use of augmented reality. Plickers isn't really augmented reality, but it's a similar concept, and it really is um, engaging for the students and easy to replicate in the classroom. To get started, you go to their website and you print off their cards, but this time you cut them out or hand them out, one per student, and everyone is a unique code or symbol that has four sides to it. They're labeled with a tiny A, B, C, and D that basically only that student can see. And then you go to the Plickers website enter in your questions, and similar to other interactive quizzing sites, um, then ask those questions to the class. You can either project them up on a projector screen, or you can just say them um, orally, and the students, in order to answer them, hold up their Plickers card with their answer facing up. You then take your smartphone or your iPad and scan the whole room, just basically take a, a panoramic picture of the whole room and while you're scanning it there the Plickers app is recognizing which answer each student has held up and generating instant results as you can see in the screenshot from my iPhone on the right and what each student answered I didn't take the time here to enter in students names but you do have the ability to do that so that you have specific answered tied to specific students, but it works really great for just an anonymous poll or a quick pulse of the class with very little technology required and a lot of excitement engagement. So now we're going to go into the Erasmus app, which is kind of the, the forefather of these augmented reality experiences and bringing them into the mainstream, um, knowing about them. Let's take a look at what Erasmus can do. You can find auras in everyday objects if you just start scanning them with an augmented reality app. This is an example that's familiar using the Erasmus app. I'll launch the Erasmus app and go into scanning mode and just use the front side of a $20 bill to watch it come to life. Now that brings your money flying away to a whole new level. Let's actually flip the $20 bill over, too. Again, get it in focus to scan it. Pretty awesome. So what can we do with these apps? What can we do with augmented reality in our classroom? Um, I think that there's quite a few possibilities and it just takes a little bit of time and, and being brave and adventurous to get started to, to experiment with. Um, for starters, a book report could totally be transformed with AR or augmented reality by having the cover of a book be the trigger image, and then the overlay be what the student creates to tell about the book, perhaps a video or an animation or a slideshow or something. And when other students, perhaps um, students who want to come to the library and know if they want to check out the book or not, or maybe it's parents or visitors who want to see what the students have been working on, they know to scan the book cover with an app like Erasma, and then the students um, overlay their aura comes to life. Another example would be an oral report. So instead of just listening to a student deliver orally their presentation, they could embed it within a poster or a picture that they drew or a photograph that they made or an image that they made and then have it come to life so that we actually can hear that authentic student voice telling us about it um, through the use of augmented reality. Teachers can create augmented reality, too, and bring to life any kind of worksheet in any subject area. For example, a traditional math worksheet 
could completely be transformed when students know to scan it with an AR app, and then they would be able to hear their teacher talking to them about how to solve the problems on it, and perhaps even giving an additional explanation um, along with their, um, or, or a demonstration along with their explanation. And promoting your school, whether this be to um, show off the potential of your school to new students or visitors as they first walk in your halls, um, to advertise the great accomplishments of your school. You could perhaps put up a promotional video or a celebratory message that people know to scan and then get to um, watch as that, that comes to life. So where can you put these augmented reality auras? Where can you embed these? Well, definitely up and down school hallways. Um, perhaps instead of just a traditional project fair where each student needs to man their booth, they could be completed rather instead with augmented reality apps and people could control the scanning of the projects and experiencing them as they walk through the fair. Library book covers, like I mentioned, or in a classroom library or magazine covers. Um, and student worksheets, of course, as long as there's some kind of communication that l lets people know that they're scannable, um, you can add all kinds of embedded media in, in lots of different places. Let's watch Drew's school project come to life with the Erasma app. We'll launch the Erasma app, scan the image of his poster he created at school. I'm Drew. I'm in fourth grade, 10 years old. I and listen to him talk to us about it. And the Huskers are an athletic, happy, and often found playing outside. Most teachers can envision walking up and down the hallways and watching these posters come to life Harry Potter style um, like this and, and can see a lot of educational uses for augmented reality. Here's another one. This is the teacher worksheet idea I mentioned earlier and you can see how this one might work. Here's another example of a self-created augmented reality experience. This time a worksheet. Here's the worksheet. We scan it in Erasmus. What does this bird have to do with our fine state of Nebraska. I start with a little teacher instructional video. To do so, we're going to visit a website. It's and then it links Nebraska out to the internet. Com. You'll see up here in the URL bar. And if you scroll down to the stories on this website, you can find one entitled Ancient Migration. Let's have a look. And then eventually plays the, the video the for the students. Make sure that you're taking note of any key learnings and discoveries that you hear about how this bird is important and special to our state. Jot them down on your handout. When the video plays, we can still see the paper below it and interact with it, but we've got to keep that image in our uh, lens viewfinder so that we can keep that video playing. You get the idea. So both of those examples were created with Erasma, and obviously they're not professional, but they are educational and very easy to do. Um, I'm going to show you both Erasma and Blipar now so that you can compare both of them and see how you could create something similar in either one of these two free apps. I'm going to recommend an article for you to get started with Erasma um, that is available in the, in the notes and the links that are um, underneath of this video. You can definitely click on this link and read about getting started with Erasma. Or you can watch, as I demonstrate a little bit here in this screencast, how you go to studio.erasma.com and create it. This one is um, I happen to create on the web, but you can also create directly from within the app in Erasma your own augmented reality experience with Erasma, first you'll need to create an account. Log in at studio.erasma.com and a forewarning, there can be inappropriate content in some of the auras that you might explore. So I recommend skipping right over to my auras and creating a new one. When you create an aura, there are three steps. Step one, you upload a trigger. You can upload any image that you either capture yourself. I just took some pictures of some um, photos standing out around my house. 
You can set up hot spots in different areas of the image to become the trigger. For this one, I'll just go ahead and go to the next step, step two. Step two is to create the overlay. So again, you can upload a video or a 3D object, or if you already have one in the library that you've already uploaded, like this video here, just select it. Then you place it on the image, wherever you want it to come to life. You can resize it a bit. You can determine if that video loops and you have some additional um, elements of interaction that you can program. But then you click Next again. And step three is to finalize it. We'll call this one Volleyball. We will definitely use some hashtags if we want to share it and have it findable for the public. And then we'll click Save. Now the Aura has been saved successfully, but in order for it to be public and for others to be able to scan that image and view it, you would need to click Share. And the easiest way to share it is to email it to someone else, or if they have access to the trigger image in the Erasmus app and they know to scan it, they can bring it to life themselves. And that's how you create an augmented reality experience with Erasmus Studio. The other option that I mentioned that I was going to show you is called Blipper. Now this one's newer and not as well known, but it has a um, more protected space for education. And it's, I think, helpful to avoid some of that inappropriate content that Erasma can have within its website. Um, you do need to sign up for an educational account. It's still free, but it might take um, another day or two to get signed up, so a little bit of extra effort of planning ahead, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. Um, and to learn a little bit about the potential of Blipar and how to get started with this app, I would highly recommend this free book from the iBookstore called Interactive Institutions by Simon Pyle, um, taken from a middle school um, social studies classroom. He has great examples that you can bring to life yourself with the Blipar app while you're um, on the pages of his book and see what he and his students created with augmented reality. Let me show you how Blipar works from the Blipar dashboard um, in this next screencast. You can see also before I start that that um, the potential here is for more than one button to come to life, allowing for an even uh, an additional layer or level of interactivity by the user. Because, for example, on this digital business card of mine that I created, um, the people who visited it with the uh, scan it with the Blipar app could touch on the Twitter button to go to my Twitter, Facebook, a gallery of photos, watch a video, email me, or listen to something. And those, all of those buttons or hotspots are programmed with the Blipar dashboard. So take a look how to do that here. Exciting new tool to create augmented reality. If you visit their website at blipper.com, you'll notice that it feels more for corporate use or for the business world. But if you look underneath the Learn More, there is a link for Blipper for Education. And it'll definitely explain the purpose and the intent of using this tool in educational spaces. I recommend scrolling all the way to the bottom, clicking the Contact Us button, and then sending off for information on how to get a free educator's account. Um, just say that you're a teacher and where you're at, and usually in about 24 hours you'll hear back from them with access to the Blip Builder website where you can eventually create these augmented reality um, blips. Now, you do need to create on a laptop um, with access to the Blip Builder website, and then you just scan them with the free Blipar app on an iPad or a uh, mobile device. Um, the Blip Builder website also has a great help guide that I would recommend visiting at help.blipar.com slash guide. And here you can learn everything about getting started, building your blip, and even see some inspiration for what types of augmented reality experiences you can build with this great tool. Um, I'm going to show you what they look like and hopefully give you some ideas here. As you'll see, I'm logged into my dashboard on Blipar with my free educators account. And when you do get to this point, I recommend going down on the left-hand side 
panel to manage users and adding in your student names here with new users. That way they will be um, underneath your account, your education account. And then my campaigns is where your blips are stored. They're, notice they're called campaigns here. A lot of it's just getting used to their terminology. We're going to start a new campaign today. We're going to call this one a book report as an example blip and create that campaign and create a new blip from within it. Um, this book report is going to be called Fenway and we're going to choose our marker which is the book cover. I just took an image of that book cover, a picture of it with my phone and I'm going to load it up into the blipr dashboard so that I can use it as my trigger image. I'll create the blip from that. So this is my son's current AR book. We're going to use it to create our blip. All right, it looks like our trigger image was successfully uploaded now, and, and we can now see that we're inside of the asset panel of hub.blipr.com. And I hope to show you the potential here of what you can do with just a taste of this. Um, you do have some media already saved in the blip library that, that kind of comes with it, I guess. These little interactive buttons that can you can add on top of your trigger image to do different things. So let's for, say, for example, that we want our, um, our readers or our learners that are going to blip here to hear some music playing when they scan this. Um, we'll put a little listen button on here. And then when they click that with their finger, we're going to add an action. And the action will be on tap to play a sound, an MP3. And it just happened to find a, a sound from um, the internet, a free MP3 that's take me out to the ball game. So we'll upload that into our blip bar library. It's saved on my desktop right now. It's called take me out to the ball game. There it comes. And again, like I said, when people are interacting with this blip, they'll have the option to touch that button and hear that music play. Let's confirm this and confirm this as well. Now we have one button. We can always um, resize it and replace it, but we have one button that's ready for us. Um, let's also do, and you can create your own images for these little buttons that lay on top of your trigger image, but um, let's do another one that maybe takes us to the author's website. So David A. Kelly, and let's make this one smaller and put it off to the side over here. Um, he has an author's webpage, so for this one I'll just copy the URL. And back where I'm building that, again, add an interaction that is to go visit a URL. And I'll paste this in here, confirm it, and I've got two, two, two actions now built into this blip. Um, a third one might be to visit a website. So again, we could use any kind of an image here. Um, let's just use a, a button that says... Um, visit this. And for this one, let's have them go learn about Fenway Park from the Boston Red Sox website. So I'm going to again copy the URL inside of my um, button, add an action or an interaction that's a website, and paste my link in there. Confirm that as well. So you can see how easy it is, and you can be very creative with what kind of actions and interactions you add on top of your blip. I'm going to go ahead now and save this. And of course we know an important step in creating augmented reality is to publish them. These are going to be um, less public than the augmented reality experiences you might create with Erasma. You will need to enter a blip code into the BlipR app, um, but this is great for education in my opinion. That way we know who is viewing our blips and who is interacting with them as well. So the blip code would now be typed into the app, and when I scan that, I'm going to see three buttons pop out, augmented reality style, which I will then be able to tap with my finger and go to three different places. One would play a, a sound, and the other would, other two would visit websites. 
So this is basically all there is to it in creating um, a blip with blip bar. Um, I hope you can see the potential and the sky's the limit with the experiences you can create. So I hope that gives you just a little bit of an example of what's possible with augmented and virtual reality. See? I can tell you that I've had a lot of fun um, trying to research and prepare for this <laughs> webinar. And I want to give a big shout out to Beth Gentrup from Norfolk Public Schools and Jill Wagner from Plainview Public Schools That's for trying it with me and using their classrooms to um, put into practice some of the ideas that we've had together. I can't wait to see what they create and what their students develop even after um, this airs. So to learn more, to stay connected, and to um, dig in even deeper, do explore the resources that I have linked um, and that I'm sharing throughout this presentation. And if you have any questions or if you want to try a project, don't hesitate to contact me at ESU8. Um, thank you so much and have a great, exciting rest of the year.